morning, Sports Report Time here at Trib Live Radio, TribLive.com. Ken Laird, Tim Benz. A few weeks ago, Tim, I may have predicted the Steelers to go 13-3 in 2016. Since then, Heath Miller has retired. Go ahead, give it to me. I don't want to crow about it necessarily because I thought that they were very worthy of being a favorite in the AFC too, but I was at least willing to caution people like you. You don't want to crow about it. Okay, I'll crow a little bit, but did you make that prediction with the full realization that they might have to replace up to six starters? Well, the six starters sound bad when you say it like that. If you just say 19 free agents, it sounds bad. But these are replaceable parts up until Heath Miller, right? Ramon Foster, come on, it's a left guard. They can get by with a veteran free agent guard. These corners that are free agents, half the people in the city don't want to stay anyway. What about Willie Gay? Yeah, it's Willie one Gay of them. Important. That's one of the starters. I think he'll be back. Okay, that's I'm a lot of money. Back. Does that money then preclude them from getting a free agent now to replace Heath Miller, or getting a free agent to replace Ramon Foster, or getting another free agent to be his complement at the other starting corner position, or a free agent to play safety alongside Mike Mitchell? I think what it's going to do is cost them a high pick in the draft spent on a tight end, which could have been spent on a safety, a young safety to groom, or a you know another young pass rusher of some kind. So... It's, it's obviously going to cost them. I was counting on Heath being back. His play had not deteriorated to the point of they wanted him to retire. Yeah, like a couple Troy of things Palomalo, here. There, there's right? some immediate reaction to, oh, my God, Heath is going to – Heath, Heath. You know, people changing their avatars to 83 like they did for nine for Pascal Dupuis for months on end. Mine's Elias Diaz, but I might change it. Well, you'll never change that because uh, he is <laughs> – he will never come as opposed to being gone. <laughs> but at any rate – um, beyond the hyperbolic tears being shed on Twitter for Heath's retirement, which I understand because he was a well-liked player and, and deserving of all sorts of accolades from the fans for being a good guy as well as a, a good tight end, there was now the immediate shift to, well, his play has deteriorated and a tight end isn't all that important. Like That, that took about 18 to 24 hours for us to get there. Beyond the loss of Heath, we grieved for a day, and now we're going to act like it was no big deal. And that's just not true. I mean, look at the teams that got far in the playoffs. Greg Olson, um, Rob Gronkowski. You know, the Steelers had Heath, Eifert with the Bengals. You know, I guess there wasn't a dominant tight end of note for Denver, but Owen Daniels had a yeah, big, had a big tight end get day, <laughs> yeah. if you will, against the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game. So, you do. there is a place for the tight end still. Let's not mollify that too much. That's number one. And number two, his skills had not deteriorated to the point that people are trying to make it sound like, well, it's no big deal to replace him and Jesse James can just slide in there. Like you were talking about, about the high pick that you're going to spend. Not only is it guys that you've, that you're going to need to replace, it's also the desire to get yet another defensive lineman in there to back up Stephon Tewitt and Cam Hayward, yeah. right? Oh, for sure. And it's also a swing tackle. Because you're going to lose Calvin Beecham, and you can finally get rid of Mike Adams. I'm back to 12-2-1. and one. I'm down from 13-3. and three. They might tie now for one of these games. No, you, Where's the tie coming? You, you, if I'm going to be able to tie Baltimore? <laughs> you make good points. I, I think it will hurt in a lot of areas. You say he's a good tight end, Heath Miller. He was a great tight end. I don't know if he's a Hall of Fame he's tight end. He's the best end, tight end in the Steelers history. No question. So, I mean, from that standpoint around here, that's great. Well, there's this belief that the Steelers don't need to go out and draft a first-round tight end. A lot of people are saying that. that I, I guess you don't have to. No. But when they've tried a first-round tight end, they, for the most part, have been pretty good at it, right? There haven't been many Bruner, though, over the last 10 years. Green, they haven't needed them because they've no, stayed I'm not for a while. The Steelers. I'm talking in the league. I mean, last year, Max Williams went in the second round. I mean, there are a lot of years the tight ends don't go that high. Okay, so that's a good sign for them if they want to use the first-round pick on... Henry. I think they'll get the top guy this year if they want to. That's a little. It might be a little high for Hunter Henry. We'll see. It's combine. Well, week. then it goes back to what their board tells them: Is yep. Hunter Henry the best tight end available? Right. Better at that point than the fourth or fifth corner, because four, maybe five corners will go before they get to draft one. Uh, is Hunter Henry as the first tight end potentially taken more beneficial to them than who would be the first guard taken to replace Ramon Foster? On offense, because they've got Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Martavis Bryant, that's a lot of ammunition with with or without a good tight end. I think a lot of people are making the case, you know, Tim, that you say they are, that, hey, you could, they'll be fine. This is still going to be an elite offense with or without Heath Miller. The problem that I see is 
the telegraphing of pass run based on Spath or James being right. in lineup, right? And the veteran presence of Heath just to calm the team down and be a guy that can get them aligned. And you know, it's, he's just rock solid. I mean, you will miss that. I, I don't know what it, it might be. Two wins difference. It's it's a little depressing from there. I I guess they knew it was coming, but I surely didn't, and it was a surprise to me. To hear I think that there was an immediate um, reaction to the fact that they were a fifth choice at running back from fumbling the ball against the Denver Broncos away from going to the AFC Championship game where people said, hey, we gave the Broncos a better run than anybody else in the postseason, so we and should be the true. favorites next year because Peyton's leaving. But it's, that was true. It was true, but what? I don't think at the time we realized that this team wasn't quite as coming yeah, back together. Yeah, I didn't know he was going to retire. Well, okay, but if you looked at the salary cap, either he or Timmons was going to have to go. Yeah, maybe. He's doing them a favor cap-wise by retiring and saving them $4 bucks. More to come. Morning Sports Report. Ken Laird, Tim Benz.